So the fetal programming hypothesis hinges around the idea that the intrauterine environment, the, the milieu to which the fetus is exposed as it grows, impacts the trajectory for diseases later in life. And that idea has been around for several hundred years. Da Vinci talks about this in the 1400s where the, the mother um, conveyed to, to her unborn child uh, the nutritional qualities of the food that she ate. But it was really in the 1980s that it was picked up in a publication in the British Medical Journal by Hells and Barker where they talked about uh, the effects of uh, birth weight on later diabetes risk. More recently, research on fetal programming has been advanced by technological developments that have allowed the detailed molecular characterization of tissue samples from babies and, and mothers. And that's really where uh, I'd say the field is going in terms of developing the ideas around epigenetic programming in utero and later risks of diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Current guidelines to prevent diabetes tend to focus on lifestyle modification and in some cases pharmacological intervention in high-risk adult individuals. This review describes the evidence showing that there are other factors that can be intervened upon much earlier in life and serves as a precursor to upcoming work that will bridge research efforts taking place here at Lund University and the University of Copenhagen with Professor Alan Vag, where we try to identify novel biomarkers that detect primordial defects arising in pregnancy or in early childhood. The results of this work should be included in guidelines to substantially improve prevention of diabetes. The vicious cycle of diabetes describes a scenario where people are becoming fatter, often with elevated levels of glucose and an increased risk for women to develop gestational diabetes. Intrauterine exposure to GDM itself is a major risk factor for later obesity and diabetes, thus perpetuating the maternal offspring cycle of disease. What we see is that the relationship between a risk factor and a disease outcome is U-shaped and continuous, such that under and overnourished pregnancies, for example, are at a greater risk of disease. Therefore, limiting weight gain and lowering gestational glucose, even in small increments, will have some impact. The point is that there's no discrete threshold, and even if a mother is not GDM, having subclinical levels of hyperglycemia can have potential effects on the child's health. The message should never be to blame the mother, but rather to empower her through the awareness and expansion of choice regarding possibilities in improving her child's health. There is a lack of evidence supporting epigenetic effects in human clinical trials, although there are currently several RCTs that are ongoing in the US, Europe, and Australia, for example, that we discuss in this review. I lead the Genetic and Molecular Epidemiology Unit. Here we focus on diabetes research using epidemiological cohort studies, clinical trials, and other lab-based studies. Our research focuses on all many elements of diabetes, uh, but primarily those related to the genetic and molecular aspects of the disease. We have studies locally and in collaboration internationally that focus on pregnancy, including a clinical trial in Puerto Rico that's seeking to affect gestational weight gain to improve the offspring's health. We also cl collaborate extensively with researchers in Copenhagen on fetal programming studies there. So Lund University Diabetes Centre is set within ExoDiab, and ExoDiab is a collaboration between Lund University and Uppsala University. Uh, where we focus on diabetes research. We have about 450 investigators within ExoDiab uh, covering all different divisions of diabetes research. Uh, there's a human tissues lab where we have samples from the pancreas, for example, and we can look at ins insulin uh, secretion from beta cells. Uh, we have epidemiological studies, clinical trials, uh, and clinical physiological studies. So we really cover a very wide range of diabetes research topics here.